Yeah, doing that. Lights are too bright. Six foe time. Oh, yeah! Nothing too exciting tonight, but had a little, uh, little time on my hands, which doesn't happen very often. And I decided I'm going to work on my six foe. Look at that. That's a stock spring. Look at that. No cylinder sticking through. I don't even know. Like what? What is that? What is that? That sucks to do. Not having cut springs um, is. It's not fun to mount and install factory length springs. See them sitting right there. Just a little rattle can. You know, I'm not getting too meticulous on stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to do what I can where I can. So uh, I bagged up all the bolts, you know, like you should. And I went to the hardware store and got some similar nuts and bolts. I don't know why some of these are green. Um, these are grade eight, but they're blue. So I got something similar to them, and I'm gonna run those instead of trying to reuse the old hardware. Seems to be going in a lot easier. But like I said, I'm not, not getting too picky. It's my six foe, and if you wanna complain about it, the door's in the same spot. It's always been. Okay, let's start off with the lower control arm, shall we? What I've learned with all this is a factory build is super simple. I mean, it's building one of these is pretty simple. Um, so on a lower control arm, there's three bolts on a 64. This little bracket here is pretty important. It's for your front side. There's two bolts in the dog bone. Um, and this little tab is what your bolts thread up into. So uh, if you're wrapping a frame or something like that, or disassembling one of these frames, these are just loose inside the frame. So when you unbolt your A-arm, this can just fall out or fall down inside the, the tunnel. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of gunk in there and they stay in place, but you can get in there and loosen them up. So um, like I actually lost one, I forgot to grab it. So when I sent this thing off and had it sandblasted, it just got lost in the shuffle. So luckily I had one uh, spare sitting around, um, but a lot of people don't have spares of these. I mean, these are kind of difficult. You could run a nut and bolt, but this is a lot nicer than having to get a wrench inside of there. So I hope everyone's been good out there. It's a crazy time we're living in. All this damn Rona floating around. Stuff's just weird right now. I mean, it's just a weird society to live in. I know every state's a little bit different, but yeah, some some places are a little more locked down than others. Um, it's just, it's goofy. Not a whole lot's changed for me because since I have auto repair business, that's essential, you know? So, my life's been pretty much the same. <laughs> my wife works for the Des Moines Public Schools here. So, her life's changed quite a bit. Pretty much the same old stuff for me. Other than I gotta go to the grocery store now. Because she stays home with the kids. That's neat. For anybody that wrenches on cars, when you're failing at a simple task like just threading a bolt into a threaded hole. It makes you question whether or not you should be in this. <laughs> really makes you wonder if this is even your calling. You gotta get those pudgy fingers working, Tickler. Get the old pudge monsters working. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And just as simple as one, two, three, my cat's in a tree. You got a lower control arm on. Another thing is at home, I am pretty limited on my tools. I got a very basic set of hand tools. I got all my tools at my shop. So. Makes you appreciate power. Real nice and snug like. Living that snug life, you know. Get it? Yeah. My limit here for home tools is a 19, and unfortunately, it's just a little too small. So I'm just gonna run that one up with the old sausage hands and uh, call that good for now. Never guess what's next. <laughs> Which way is the bolt going in, guys? I'm not perfect. Okay. Like some people are under the impression that I'm I'm perfect. And I'm not. Ask raw free. That's how you handle that. This is where it starts to kind of suck because everything gets heavy. Springtime. Hey! Welcome to the lap area. You, you've probably seen one of these before if you haven't. You're a lucky man. These are death traps. They will kill you, but they're necessary to building old cars. Because they compress springs. Springs have, I'd say, a whole bunch. If I had to be scientific, I'd say a whole bunch of energy. If I had to give you an exact figure, I'd say a lot of energy. So, just respect the tool, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. I don't wanna give you guys any pointers on using this thing, because I don't wanna be responsible. I don't want the lawsuit. Just read the instructions and respect this tool. This is not a tool you wanna cuss at. There's a lot of tools you have to cuss at. This is one you just want to talk real sweet to. It's all right, baby. We're going to get through this. You're not going to kill me today. But it's, it's 2020 now, people. You know? It's 2020, and we're still, we're still doing this. Couple tips I will give, do not have the spring in your lap while you're giving it the full beans. If something does give, you don't wanna lose your kneecaps, your junk, and both hands. You'd rather just lose a hand or two. Um, so set it somewhere safe out of the way so you can really get after it. Once you got it compressed enough, this is, this is what I do. It's a ratchet strap, pretty beefy one, nothing fancy. Uh, if you have a body on your frame, you probably don't have to do this. You could just jack it up and uh, 
the weight of the body will compress the spring. Or really, you could just keep ramrodding on that. Spring compressor, you could just keep ramrodding on that thing and it would compress it enough where you don't have to do any of this. It's saying something when I think this is a safer option than a spring compressor. Not saying it is. Again, don't need the lawsuits, but see what I did there? Wrap that sucker up and around and down. And I'm gonna just, I mean, as you can imagine, and as you can imagine, I'm gonna give this thing a couple rips. As you can see, I'm a beast of a man. No, really, the ratchet strap makes it pretty easy. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna keep going. Try to uh, save my frame for camp. Let's see where we're at here, almost. Almost there, we're close. A couple more tugs. Sometimes you just want to ride the lightning, you know? Oh yeah, we're full penetration. I slipped out. That's a full penetrator right there. Got it real deep. All right. Now, that could, that little trick there could just as easily kill you. Okay, let's, let's not tiptoe around that fact. Coil springs suck. That feels better to me. Impacts are a lot better for those coil, uh, the coil spring compressors. I don't know if they're necessarily safer, but they they get the danger over with quicker. Because you just, you know, do 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 If you got a big one, it's like, dig 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 you know. One of those. It just handles it a lot faster, so you're, you're in and out of danger zone. Now you gotta get that coil spring compressor out of there. Which is fun. If you've never had the pleasure of digging A coil spring compressor out, especially one that the the bolt is now at a point where you cannot reach with a ratchet. So I'm gonna have to try to get a wrench in there, give her a couple turns, back that out, loosen it up, and then this little fork thing will come out. And then you gotta completely unthread that whole rod out of that upper section right there. And then drop it out piece by piece. To all my lowrider people out there, they call these things shocks, I believe, is the term. Um. <laughs> as soon as you get that strap off, she gets a little excited. These are shocks. <laughs> uh, something I'm not going to be used to having. But they're supposed to improve the ride quality, I think. This is the final piece. Still got to do a sway bar um, and then tie rods and, and stuff like that. I'm waiting on the tie rods. Man, I, I've been ordering parts for the last couple months uh, whenever I got some extra bucks, you know? I was really happy. Thought that I had everything and then I remembered I don't have anything for the steering. Forgot all about steering, you gotta be able to turn. So, had to order some tie rods, inner and outer, new adjuster sleeves, and those aren't super cheap for these things. Um, and I know I'll probably get a few people wondering why I did drum brakes. Uh, there's a few reasons. 
for the drum brakes, less brake dust, which is uh, about the only benefit. The other reasons was I had them. Uh, Reggie, the guy I did the 63 X frame for, the wrapped one with all the chrome stuff, the black one. Um, he gave me these off of his 63 and they were all new. So I had them, simple, I didn't have to buy nothing. Because uh, this, this build, like I've said a few times, it's just, it's got to be reasonably priced. Um, I'm still at a point in my life where I can't spend a ton of money. But I, I got to thinking about it, and is it really going to matter? I mean, which would I rather? Do what I can do for now. Uh, still, Not try to cut any corners, but just do it as quality as I can do it for now. And get the car on the road. Or wait another who knows how long. Could be a decade. When I can afford to, you know, get all the fancy stuff. And I can always upgrade down the road. I could put disc brakes on this down the road. but um, And then some people are going to ask about the steering linkage. I'm just doing the factory manual steering on this car. Easy, simple. Um, parts are not very expensive. I mean, tie rods are like 100 bucks for the whole set. But um, I have the manual steering box. I don't have to mess around with the power steering pump and all that. But again, something I can upgrade in the future. I just really got to get this car on the road before I, I, I lose my mind, you know? That's the point I'm at with it. Look at how boring that is. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to have a little progress on this thing. Um, even if it's not some super high-end stuff, I, it's mine. So, I'm happy. Front suspension's done. If I had some wheels to put on it, that thing could be on the ground right now. Because it doesn't need tie rods and all that to be on the ground. So, I'll probably wait until I get the tie rods. Steering box. Bolt all that stuff in, get it all cleaned up, paint it, bolt it all in, and then uh, move on to the back. Need to get a rear end for the back. Well, get a rear end here, a decent one. Uh -um. Got all new arms for the back. I'm with the aftermarket arms for the back, just because they look okay. The front arms, they sell only like tubular aftermarket ones, and they just look terrible to me. I mean, Unless you're going for like a sporty car, I don't know. They just they, they don't look very good. I like the way the factory arms look a lot better than the tubular ones on these cars. So, but the back ones are just more like boxed in. The upper, the banana bar, is a, a tubular one, but it's just a bar. I can live with that. It looks okay. Um, and the the lowers are just kind of boxed in, almost look like lowrider arms. So I got all that new. Uh, still need to get a panard bar. Um, well, I have a panar bar and I get the bushings for it. Um, no sense in putting an adjustable one in or anything like that. So yeah, rear end next. Then we will get the motor set in. I got the transmission getting rebuilt right now. I need to get a flex plate for the motor. Um, I want to do it all in stages. So once I get this thing on the wheels rolling, I'm going to focus on getting stuff for the motor. Need a flex plate, carburetor. Distributor, water pump. Did I say starter? Did I say starter? I need a starter. Um, and some more odds and ends. I got an alternator, need a bracket. Uh, yeah, you know, just some basic, uh, you know, basic stuff here. And I got the transmission cross member. I went with a 700R4. Because I wanted overdrive, want to be able to cruise the sand on the highway pretty easily. So I had to get a swap cross member for that. And yeah, should be able to bolt that sucker in, get it on down the road. And I want to build, I want to put the radiator support on, put a radiator in it. I want to get everything done there before I move on to the body. Because the body's going to be a long road. Um, so I kind of want to enjoy this step this you know this process because the body works just going to be dusty and and tedious so i want to get the radiator in it the radiator support on it uh, get the motor fired up listen to it make sure i don't have any gremlins there 
Um, oh, exhaust manifolds. I need to get some exhaust manifolds. I do have SS exhaust that came off of the copper 64, uh, Mike's copper 64. So I'm probably going to run that. Um, I think it'll sound okay with the big block. Just have to probably modify where it mounts up to the headers, but I got it. Might as well try it. Don't sound good. I can replace it. So there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. A little progress. Feels good to be working on my own stuff.